I know you heard me on the radio Flexing She loved the sound of my voice It's the best thing Daydreaming of the jazz all day Pick up the phone late night with Larry K I know you heard me on the radio Flexing She loved the sound of my voice It's the best thing Daydreaming of the jazz all day Pick up the phone late night with Larry K Scarlet Faithful, Scarlet Nation, welcome to another episode of Night Watch with Larry K, your host. And uh, sorry it's a little late, but when I'm at the games late at night and then I go uh, enjoy one of my favorite uh, before and after game, you know, drink and, and food spots, it's kind of hard for me to, to get back and uh, make a video at night, you know, to get it out to you guys as early as possible. So I'm doing it the next day. Um, but man, let's let's be honest. Uh, this is just a fun time to be a Scarlet Knights fan right now in basketball. Uh, this it, is just a lot of fun. You know, you, you you're starting to see when Rutgers is good in any sport, especially in in football or basketball. You start to get the text messages. You start to get the phone calls. You start to get the the conversations at work and and when you're out. You know, from your friends that are casual fans, Jersey people, or maybe even went to Rutgers, but they don't follow it as much as us diehards. And it's just fun because people are shooting me texts last night while I'm at the game. Like, are you there? You know, is it crazy in there? What a wild game. You know, guys I know that own bars and breweries are texting me because they got it up on the big screen and it's loud and it's going crazy. And it's just a good feeling, you know, especially when you beat number one Purdue and then you turn around and you come home and you take care of business against uh, rival Maryland. Uh, it feels good, especially with Willard over there coaching Maryland, uh, Jersey Cat. If you have not seen his uh, post-game presser yet, Willard, I encourage you to go do so. It's a lot of Jersey humor in there, especially him talking about how he had to get real Italian food or his wife would kill him. He had to bring it back to Maryland. Um, so that was an interesting uh, post-game press conference. Obviously, Pikes and, and the guys was interesting, too. And Pike, man, if you haven't noticed, I got this shirt. I like Pike. Spin on the old Ike. Uh, great shirt. I forget who I got it from, but it's uh, it's an awesome shirt, and uh, I've been rocking it, and I thought it was appropriate for today with the Scarlet uh, Pocket Square, and away we go. So this game to me, let me just say first and foremost, the defense on this team this year, this may, have, this may be the best defense that I've seen Steve Peichel coach. And quite frankly, this may be the best defense that I personally have ever really observed on a basketball team for an extended period of time. Now, can they maintain this level of play? We will see. And there's going to be ebbs and flows to any season. That's just life. But let's hope we can maintain it as long as possible. I don't want to harp on it, but technically we should be 4-0 and in the Big Ten uh, because, again, you know what happened with Ohio State. But I'm not going to go too deep into that. Um, Ohio State, of course, of course, taking a tough loss last night to Purdue. Um, and that's what's going to happen in the Big Ten. Big Ten's tough. You saw Iowa storm back last night against Indiana. And early on in that game, you thought there was no way in hell that Iowa was going to pull that out. But nonetheless, they storm back and they take the win. So the Big Ten's a tough league. It's never going to be an easy league. It's never going to be nothing you, nothing you can take for granted in the Big Ten. Um and so it is what it is. But that being said, this defense is just incredibly tough. They are holding teams to 20 points below their averages. And it's just stifling. And even in this game where, you know, our offense, I wouldn't say there was a lot of talk. And Pike said, too, it was a, a kind of a rock fight. You know, it was kind of a sloppy game, kind of a grinded out game. And he kind of likes that. It was. On the other hand, we had offensive spurts, though. You know, there, there are spurts where we are able to produce, and that's nothing new for Rutgers uh, to kind of be hot and cold and streaky on offense. But one of the things I've noticed specifically over the last two games, and you hope this continues, is that we've found points when necessary as opposed to spiraling out of control. I think the last game I can remember where we really started to sputter in a time of need was Miami. You see us now, and these guys will make shots when needed at timely points, even if the offense isn't dominating at the time. You saw Cam Spencer hit a couple really nice threes. You saw Simpson with that dunk. 
And then same as against Purdue, late in the game, which I said would probably be part of the recipe for success with this team, late in the game, you see Paul Mulcahy take the team kind of on his shoulders, and you see him driving the ball, getting it inside, and making things happen. And when he does that, it's really hard to defend. It's really hard to beat. And again, you had another game where everybody on the team played the role expected of them and played it well. The only thing that was really a shortcoming, I think, was Cliff's offense. But listen, sometimes teams are going to key in to try to stop one aspect of your game. They played Cliff tough down low. They wouldn't even really let him get into the post. But to, to be fair... We didn't seem to be pushing the low post to Cliff very often anyway. It seemed like we were content to put him in the high post, have him help facilitate, and then find shots and get other guys to the lane to make things happen. That full-court press forcing 20 turnovers is also incredible, and that full-court press created a lot of scoring opportunities off of turnovers and in transition. Uh, that you want to see and that this team will also thrive on, especially given the fact that we can at, at times struggle in our half-court half offense. And that's no secret to anybody. Willard mentioned that after the game. The, the commentators were discussing it. I, I rewatched the game. I saw it from the stands. Everybody knows we can, we can struggle in the half-court. We don't always struggle in the half-court. If you can get the ball in the low post and Cliff is having a good game or guys are hot shooting the ball, then we can function in half-court offense, and we did early in the game. And then we struggled at, at points during the game, and that's when Maryland seemed like they could kind of get back into it. That's going to happen. So the beauty of the full-court press and of getting guys now that can shoot from the perimeter, specifically Cam Spencer, is that we don't always need to facilitate so well in the half-court offense to pull off games, especially when the defense is playing as well as it's playing. But again, guys played their roles. And a player that, again, I've been discussing from the beginning, Cam Spencer. My read on this young man right now is, this is how I would describe Cam Spencer right now. Cam Spencer is a kid who transferred, and just in the last couple weeks, his swag finally caught up with him in the transfer portal. Cam came, and he was playing, but now his swag has, has caught up with him and has joined him in Piscataway. Uh, because, and the reason I say that is, early in the season, you saw when he'd go up against higher-end competition, and even the lower guys, it wasn't that he wasn't playing well, it wasn't that he didn't have good games, it wasn't that he wasn't stealing the ball, it wasn't that he wasn't hitting shots, but there was some intangible energy around him that was like, okay, you know, how is, does he feel about himself on this court? And all of a sudden, the last two weeks, you know, the last two games specifically, and a little bit before that, you see a Cam Spencer who is feeling himself. He knows, like, nah, I'm the same dude when I was dominating a lower-tier league. When I was dominating that league and I had that swag, I got that swag now in the Big Ten. Like, give me the ball. Let me make moves. Let me steal it. Let me shoot from back, back way downtown behind the perimeter. You know, give me the ball. I'm going to sink it. I'm going to win the game. I'm that dude. I am that dude on the floor. I'm the scorer. I'm the shooter. Give me the ball. That, that becoming a part of his overall attitude and demeanor is going to pay dividends this season and beyond. So just seeing Cam doing that has been huge. 30 minutes, 13 points, 5 assists, 1 rebound for Spencer. He was just, he was shooting very well and he, he hit timely shots. And then, of course, we talked about Mulcahy. Paul Mulcahy, 15 points, one assist, no rebounds, but 32 minutes played. And you, you see what he does. Mawat Mag, as usual, high energy guy, six points, uh, four rebounds, no assists, but the rebounding and the defense, exactly what you need from him, played 26 minutes. Andre Hyatt comes in, scores, brings energy, his block uh, in the middle of the first half off the, you know, the backboard, that block, and he just standing there flexing. And then you see Spencer find a beautiful pass, perfect pass to Derek Simpson, who goes down and slams the ball. That kid is coming up so well. Six points, one assist, 18 minutes. Um, Simpson, you know, there was a time during that game where I think he, he did start to get a little hyped. 
Uh, but he calmed it down again. Just the fact that Simpson's able to come in and be an integral piece of the team and bring a certain energy, almost not quite there yet. He's a freshman, but almost, dare I say, like a Jacob Young-type energy to the team has been absolutely vital. And he creates a different pace and a different problem for other teams' defenses, specifically in the half court. If you recall, I forget what part of the game, but when he crossed up his defender, he got the ball at the top. He, he you know, they kicked it back out to him, the reset, and he just crosses up his defender, flies into the, the paint, and just hits the floating shot, mid-range shot. That's the kind of element he brings where he can, he can beat you off the dribble, and he can beat you off the dribble maybe fairly consistently. And if you need a change of pace, that may be somebody that helps, and it's worked for us so far. Um, both Wolf and, and Reber, three minutes apiece. Reber with two points, one rebound. Uh, Wolf with no nothing. Um, that's going to happen. But Wolf gave us three meaningful minutes, and when Pike decided to go to Dean Reber, you know, people forget, oh, now we got Wolf, so Reber's, you know, third fiddle and forget about Dean. No, Dean brings a different element to the team. And I just think that one of the beautiful aspects of this team, I will continue to say, it will be, you'll get tired of hearing me say it. But the fact that these guys are playing very specific and needed roles, and if they fulfill those roles, we win the game, is huge. That's the exact type and style of basketball that Steve Peichel wants to play. And these guys in this group is capable of doing it. So, Sometimes you're going to put Wolf in there. And if you want to bang offensively in the paint, Wolf is going to bang offensively in the paint some games. If that's not what you're looking for or that's not working, you can put Dean Reber in there, and he's going to find guys with nice assists. He's going to facilitate by passing. He's more of a stretch five, and he's going to be able to shoot the three, as we've seen. And he's also going to be able to, to execute plays like we saw with the pick and roll, which was gorgeous where he... Uh, flush that dunk, passes the ball, sets the pick, pick and roll. Old school basketball. Pick and roll right to the hoop, beautiful pass, boom, flushes it. He's going to be able to do things like that. So it's not that you have a deep team just in terms of if somebody goes down or if somebody's not having a good night or if somebody gets in foul trouble. You also have a deep team in terms of you can strategically do different things with this team depending upon what the the defense is showing you and what the offense is showing you. Because let's face it, this is a defensive first team, and all of these guys play great defense and bring different things to the table in terms of their defensive game. So whatever the other team is showing you, you can you have the players and the pieces to be able to strategically sub guys in and out of the game. And that is huge. And we've seen that. We really have a team of at least nine guys every game getting meaningful minutes. And we saw Miller come in last game, and if he comes in and starts getting a couple meaningful minutes a game, especially for defensive purposes, now you got a, a team of 10 guys getting meaningful minutes. And that's not out of desperation. That's not out of necessity. That's out of flexibility, which is beautiful. This team has been well-constructed, and, and to be honest with you, to beat the number one team on the road in Mackey, and it's not like Purdue Slip and they just took down Ohio State, then to come home and take care of business against Maryland, and not take care of business against Maryland in the sense that we had an excellent offensive game where shots were just dropping or you know we just dominated because Maryland was so terrible, but to have a high energy, pedal to the floor, defensively intense effort, right after coming off of that win is amazing. And it's even more amazing that we've not only blown out most of our out-of-conference schedule that we were supposed to for lower-tier competition, but that we're playing so competitively in conference thus far after the departure of Geo Baker and Ron Harper Jr. You know, if you had told anybody that this was, was how our season was going to go, after losing those two guys, before the, the Spencer transfer and things, I think a lot of people would sign up for it. Now, it's unfortunate what happened in Ohio State. It's unfortunate we had the early injury bug and we dropped games to Temple and to Miami. Um, but that doesn't take away from where we are this season. And I'm really liking what I'm seeing so far from this group. 
and there's a lot of potential for this group. I don't know that we've had, and Spencer's going to have droughts. Everybody does. But I don't know that we've had somebody as consistent as him, you know, from a perimeter shooting standpoint and even a mid-range shoot, even just a facilitator standpoint, just an offensive scorer who's also leading the league in steals on defense. I don't know that we've had a player that consistent. We've had great players, Harper, Geo, but consistency is huge here too. And the other player that I really think has has really, really, really upped one aspect of his game, which I did predict, and I saw hints of it against Notre Dame last year, Caleb McConnell. I, I, I suspected he would be more of an offensive I don't want to say offensive force, but I had suspected that he would be more of an offensive weapon or impact player than he was last year. And I wasn't wrong so far, right? So, Caleb, 33 minutes, 10 points, 2 assists, 4 rebounds. So he's been getting double-digit points most of the season so far. And once in a while, you know, he missed the one free throw against Ohio State. Sometimes he'll take a shot you don't love. But for the most part, Caleb's been finding his mid-range jump shot game, his turnaround jumper, his pop-up jumper, his occasional three-pointer. And he's been forcing teams to, to keep an eye on him when he, when he starts putting the ball on the floor, and he's able to turn around and find open guys too. Not to mention he's another tall Guy who can play guard, similar to Paul, and that just creates matchup problems. So Caleb McConnell being a force on offense has also been a revelation for this team this year. And I expected it, and I think most people probably realized he would take somewhat of that role. Remember, when he was a young player, he had a very nice stroke. He was a, a very nice shooter. Then he kind of started to emphasize his defensive game. He was struggling a little on offense. That became his bread and butter, obviously winning Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year last year. But now he's a senior, he's a, he's a captain, and not that he wasn't, but he's he's filling some of the vacuum, he and Paul, you know, with, with Gio and Ron leaving. And you see that he's also stepping up on the offensive side of the floor, which adds just another element to the team. And again, it's a very balanced, spread-the-wealth type team, and it's working for us because I've always thought that's what Pike wanted in the first place. That's the style he likes to play ball with. And I think part of the reason the defense is so stifling is when you get a Cam Spencer who's relentless, and then you get a Mawat Mag who's taken significant steps up this year, coupled with a Caleb McConnell, you are very, very difficult to score against when you're playing at high intensity. In these last two games, I would even say last three, last several games, these... This team is playing with the defensive intensity we used to see in the early years of Pike where they had no choice but to play with defensive intensity because they just didn't have the immense talent to be able to compete toe-to-toe. -to -toe. They had to make up for it with defensive intensity. They're playing with that same defensive intensity and sense of urgency, but they do have the talent to compete, and you're seeing the results. Now, it's early in the season, and it's certainly early in the Big Ten Conference schedule. So we've got a long way to go. Iowa, who hasn't been playing great ball at all, just got the win over Indiana, and they don't look like slouches. And they're not slouches. It's Iowa. So they come to town on Sunday. It's a noon game. Um, and I hope to see you guys there, and I hope we get loud. This crowd, by the way, was probably the, the loudest, most rambunctious crowd I've seen this season so far. Indiana was pretty good. You had a good amount of Indiana fans, though. This game, you had a lot less Maryland fans, and you just had high energy. I think some of it had to do with beating Purdue. I think some of it had to do with just defensive intensity that we're showing and just some big plays. But the energy was great. So let's try to get that same energy back in Jersey Mike's on Sunday against an Iowa team that is, is looking to, to get their season back on track, really, and has already started to do so. So they're coming in with some momentum. And they're coming in looking to, to get a W and get themselves back on track. And beating Rutgers, especially running good offense against a stout Rutgers defense, will certainly go a long way for them in terms of how they want to be viewed and how they see themselves. So this is a huge test again. And every, every game is a huge test in this league. And this is another huge test. And Pike would tell you the same, and I'm sure he's got the guys focused. So let's get back in there Sunday. Let's get another W 
and let's continue this run and let's see where the chips fall. But you've got to be excited thus far about what you're seeing from this team. And again, just guys filling their roles, guys filling their roles to the best of their abilities and making the most out of their roles is leading to good things happening for this team. So I hope everybody enjoys the mild weather that we've been seeing this winter. Enjoy your Friday, enjoy your Saturday, and we will see you on Sunday. Go Knights!